In part one of this two-part series, we discussed how to pre-assemble these 120 volt uh, outlet devices into the faceplate on this commercial style box. Here we have a box that's prepared in order to connect this up and make this so that it will be a live uh, functioning part of the circuit. Uh, this box is at the end of a run. Uh, the previous outlets in this uh, circuit have all been run in parallel and not in series. That makes it so that each individual set of outlets can either malfunction or function independently. In other words, we're not counting on any malfunctions, but if an outlet was to go bad somewhere in the circuit, it would not have the effect of disabling all the outlets in the circuit, but it would be confined to the one device. That's why we've hooked them up this way. So we have here a standard four inch box, uh, two and an eighth inch deep, mounted to the wall, and we have our, um, our power feed coming in, this MC cable. Now, just so we're clear, uh, this circuit has been killed at the uh, circuit breaker panel. So uh, there's no power here, I can touch this, there's no, no problem. So working with these, you wanna make sure that you always do the same thing when you're working on a circuit, uh, connecting, disconnecting, or repairing any device in a circuit, that you disconnect the power upstream to make sure there's no, no uh, tendency or risk of shock. Okay, so if you look at this carefully, you'll see there are three, uh, three, condu three conducting wires, the black, the white, and the green. And again, going back to part one, you'll remember that the green is the ground, the white is the neutral, the black is the hot. I wanna make sure that you always use the wires in that order when running wiring of your own, if you choose to do so. Of course, we all, always recommend that you talk to a qualified and licensed electrician and even use that electrician, especially if your jurisdiction demands it. Oftentimes a homeowner can uh, and is permitted to do some wiring in their own home if you feel confident. But please double check and consult an electrician before you make any changes to the existing wiring in your home shop or otherwise. Okay, back on subject here. What we're gonna do today, oftentimes you'll, you've likely seen that um, connections of one wire to another in a circuit are often made with what's called a wire nut, a twisting thread on. You just hold the ends of the wires together, twist the nut on, and that's what holds the connection together. Today, we're demonstrating the fact that we're gonna use these connectors here. This is a push-on connector. It's a connector that uh, can also be release the wires, but it gives you a nice firm connection, and it's a lot simpler to do because you simply just push the wire on and this connector grabs the wire and holds it firmly. If you look closely at these connectors, uh, why are there four holes when there's only two devices? Well, it's because um, with each one of these, the hot, the neutral, and the ground, we're going to have a supply coming into the connector. And because of the modular way that these are created and how each device has its own set of wires, okay? So one is for the incoming power, or outgoing, or, or I should say the, uh, the neutral or the ground. Um, the other two are to connect your device to. The fourth one is if you want to then um, take your uh, connections and expand your circuit by running out, uh, going on to the next box with the next devices. So in this particular case, uh, we will, since we're at the end of the line, we'll only be using three of the four holes. It's no problem to leave that fourth hole unused in these style connectors. I'm going to amend one thing though. With the ground, we are going to use the fourth hole and that is because we're going to connect our three grounds together and then pigtail using the fourth hole to actually connect physically to this threaded connection in the back of the box to ground at this location. So in this particular case, with the ground, we will be using all four holes. Let's start with the ground. It's a good practice and that's what we're going to do here. 
So you simply push on, and there you are. If you'll notice too that uh, these wires have been stripped so that less than be three eighths of an inch is uh, left exposed. That way when it's pushed on the connector, you'll see um, there is no exposed wire. Everything is covered by the connector. The connector. Sometimes it goes in a little stiff, and that's actually confidence inspiring because you wouldn't want it going in loose. It would it'd make you feel like uh, there might be a tendency to want to come back out. So it's nice that it takes a little bit of effort and that there's a little bit of pushback on getting these wires inserted. One good thing too, the design of these connectors is that you can feel the connector actually has like a, almost a, like a little click or like a, you, you can just tell by, by the tactile feel that you've made the connection the way it's designed to be used. So because we're using this gauge wire, the wire is a little stiff, a little challenging to work with, but it's definitely eminently doable. Okay, so that connection has been made. The, the ground. Try to maneuver these wires around a little bit to keep the um, the hots and the neutrals close together in the box. Get them close so there's not such a reach. Okay, then we'll take our next push-on connector and we will uh, supply device. Lastly, we have our hots we can put together. <clears throat> okay, supply. Okay. You maybe you even see that the way I'm doing this, that there's just a little bit of resistance and then it just allows you in and it goes almost in with a click. Okay, so if you'll notice on each of these connectors, you can actually see see one, two, three, those are all pushed all the way in. You can see that because you can see the end of the copper sticking up into the uh, translucent part of the connector. So we have solid connections on all three of these devices. Now all that's left is to pigtail the ground back to this connection in the box. Okay, so what I've done here is I've made a pigtail. Uh, of course, the looped end here, we're gonna put around the screw inside the box. This end is going to go inside the uh, push-in connector. I've made this just a bit too long. I'm going to trim it before I go ahead and install it. See there, I'm down to about a roughly 5 16ths to 3 8 exposure. Okay. Okay, that's in. So, before pushing into the box, we'll get this over here to where we can get hooked onto our screw. screwdriver ready okay always careful to make sure that when we take a closer look at this again here always careful to make sure that the wire is wrapped on in a clockwise fashion so that when these screws tightened it will tend to draw that wire tight around the screw. Okay, so here we have all of our connections made. Our ground wire is grounded, so we'll now carefully push these 
connections into the box one at a time, folding them neatly so that when the box cover is uh, put on, that they will be out of the way and at low risk of coming in contact with each other. So, let me see. Okay. One thing I neglected to do was remove these two screws. I will take them out and then we will attach the box. Okay, so just for demonstration purposes, um, the connectors have all been laid into the box neatly and where the screws have been started, I have not finished tightening them, so here I am tightening these screws nice and firmly to bring that face plate firmly on to the, uh, the top of our four inch box here. Okay, so here we are at the box. I'm gonna make the circuit live again. Okay, so here we have one outlet uh, complete, ready to go, good and solid. All the fasteners have been torqued down nice and tight. So now comes the moment where we can check the circuit to make sure there are no faults. And what I'm gonna use here is a very simple little uh, receptacle tester. Different outfits make them. This is the one I have, nothing special. And of course, nothing that I am affiliated with, just simply this is the one I chose and use well. You can see a little uh, chart here that will show you the pattern of lights. Okay, so down at the bottom of the chart, you'll see the two the middle and right hand light, the two amber lights, if they come on and the red light does not come on, that will tell you that you have a correctly wired uh, receptacle and that you'll be good to go. So we'll try both sides just to be certain that there will be no issues. Uh, let me see here. My depth of perception is off there. So I'm trying to hold the camera and do this. Okay, so no faults, good to go. Other device, no faults, good to go. So here we have yet one more uh, correctly wired outlet in the shop, done a few here. This one has been located so that I can uh, install a radial arm saw here shortly. That may be the subject of yet another video. Okay, well thanks for sticking with us on this two-part series. If you like what you saw, Please hit subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, that way you'll always know what's going on here at the Up to Craft Shop. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you soon.